What's up guys? This is Coach LaRussa from MakePlays.com welcoming you back to another episode of Film Room Fridays. Today's episode is brought to you by IC2C, an app that gives you instant access to college coaches at any level, while also allowing you to follow teammates and fellow recruits. The cool thing is it's free to download and free to use. So take control of your recruitment because your future is now. Download IC2C in the App Store today and join the movement that student athletes everywhere are becoming a part of. Now in today's breakdown, we're gonna take a look at the number nine pick in last night's draft. He was the ACC Rookie of the Year and he's a guy that I've been following since his sophomore year in high school. Today, we're gonna take a look at Dennis Smith Jr. Today's breakdown in many ways is a reflection. You see, I started Make Plays back in 2013, and shortly after, I was asked to travel with Team Loaded. And I'm going to shout out T. White for that opportunity, because you just never know what God's got in store for you. That summer is where my eyes were open. That summer is when I met Dennis Smith Jr., and in the process, I was exposed to a lot of NBA talent. I was there through it all, when he'd clown around in the hotel, and when he'd punch it on the nation's best. And I honestly thought that was normal for one of the nation's best point guards. But now that it's been a few years and the 2016 class is headed to the NBA, I realized just how rare that time was. What I witnessed day in and day out wasn't normal at all because I haven't seen anything like it since. The abilities that Dennis brings to the table are just different. From his 48 inch vertical to his mastery in pick and roll, Dennis Smith Jr. has the tools to become a premier guard in the NBA. And today, I'm gonna break down why. I know you'd like to see more of the thrills, but let's take a look at his facilitating skills. The reason I want to start here is because this is an area of his game that doesn't get mentioned a lot. But from a facilitating standpoint, I actually see a lot of Chris Paul in his game. He's got great vision, but more importantly, he's got great timing and great accuracy on his passes. As soon as defensive rotations occur, he can deliver the pass to his open man, on time and on target. This includes lobs, dump offs, duck ins, and kick outs. So I'd say he's got elite court vision. And for right now, I'm not even including any pick and roll plays, but pick and roll is actually where his facilitating skills are best. He just has that feel for the game because unlike most elite athletes, Dennis doesn't play too fast. He's rarely out of control and his pace for the game is something that comes natural for him. So whether he's pushing the ball in transition or just attacking the basket in the half court, he can make plays for his teammates at a high level. And make no mistake, Dennis is a walking highlight. So whether it's a dunk or whether it's a dime, I'm sure we'll see him in the top plays all the time. Now let's move on to his transition game. This is where you'll see his ability to change speeds and get to the rack, and he does it with ease. Also notice that he's doing this in four dribbles or less. He's very comfortable handling the ball with either hand, and he's got a number of moves that he can throw at you in an instant. This unpredictable attack is why he's so effective in transition. I also want you to notice his balance while he's attacking. It's a word not used enough when talking about basketball skills, but his balance is what allows him to stay low, keep the ball under control, and then explode to the rim for the finish. These abilities allow him to push the pace and put a ton of pressure on the defense. And although every rookie will have to adjust to the 24 second shot clock, I think the transition will go smoothly for Dennis, mainly because of his ability to make a play in very few dribbles. When attacking the basket, Dennis has a number of moves that he'll use to break down his defender. So let's start off with the crossover. He's got great shiftiness and he can use it going left or right. And when he gets to the rim, he can finish with either hand. The next moves we'll look at are his in and out dribble, his euro step, and his go-to move, the left-handed hezzy. These moves are great and they allow him to get by his defender. But the reason he's able to do this at such a high level is because he's got a quick first step. That allows him to get downhill in a hurry and then his strength and explosiveness kick in as he gets into the paint. Most 19 year old guards would get pushed off their spot, but Dennis is able to take contact and drive in a straight line without losing any of his explosiveness. Again, that's because of his balance. Now let's flash back to the facilitating section of the breakdown. The reason he was able to get his teammates open is because of his ability to attack the basket. He draws two and sometimes even three defenders on a drive, so his ability to be a dual threat makes him very deadly when attacking. Anytime you reach a level of greatness, you'll always have haters and you'll have debaters. 
And one of the biggest things I hear debated is that Dennis can't shoot. And many times when people talk, they really don't have their facts straight. Here's some numbers for you. Dennis shot 46% from the field and 36% from three in his freshman year at NC State. Now let's compare that with career stats of some of the other point guards in the NBA. Steph Curry shoots 43% from three. Kyrie shoots 38, Damian Lillard shoots 37, Chris Paul shoots 37, and Westbrook shoots 31% from beyond the arc. My point here is that these guys have clearly been dominant at the NBA level. He won't be Steph Curry with the shot, but it doesn't matter because his most dominant skill is attacking. Pull-ups won't be his first option, but he can knock it down enough to keep the defense honest, bringing defenders out where he can blow by him for the drive. The last thing I'll mention regarding his shooting is that he's proven to knock down jumpers in the clutch. I can't use college footage, but check out his college highlights, especially the Duke game, and you'll see for yourself. Now let's get into what I think separates Dennis from other rookie guards. He's one of the few who understands and can execute every read in a pick and roll. First off, you see him turn the corner, get to the middle of the paint, and finish in traffic. You see him turn the corner with and without a high hedge, meaning the big shows to try and cut him off on the perimeter. But Dennis understands that in this situation, you continue attacking the hedger's outside foot. And once he turns the corner, he's free to make a play. Change of pace moves are crucial when using a ball screen. So his hesitation moves allow him to read and react. Many guards premeditate what they'll do in a pick and roll, but that's a recipe for disaster. You can't go too fast on a ball screen. It's all about short bursts, speeding up and slowing down, cutting defenders off and getting them on your hip, all while keeping your head up to read the help. Watch here as the big man shows to try and cut off his penetration. Instead of picking up his dribble, he continues to attack, dragging the big out and eventually turning the corner. In order for this to work, your team will need good floor spacing. Shooters will need to be ready to catch and shoot at all times, because otherwise, their defenders will clog the lane and take away the option to score. Now is where his facilitating skills come back into play. First, let's watch the hedger show, Bam rolls, and Dennis simply lobs it over the top. Seems simple, but this happens because of his ability to score first. And let's not undervalue the fact that Dennis puts perfect touch on his lobs. Half the time, Bam didn't even know he was throwing them, but Dennis would time them perfectly. But he doesn't just throw lobs, he can throw the pocket pass as well. And when he turns the corner and gets deep in the paint, he can dump it off when the help rotates. The next read we'll look at is the weak side duck in option. This option becomes available when Dennis gets deep enough in the paint to force a weak side rotation. And right when he sees their chest cutting him off in the lane, he can deliver the pass. This pass can either be a lob, a bounce pass, or a drop off, and they can lead to dunks and and one layups. But keep in mind, this only happens because he's forcing defensive rotations. He's putting constant pressure on defenses, and he's making the right reads as they throw different coverages at him. Next, let's look at what happens when help comes from the wing. By now, teams are getting desperate, trying to stop him from getting in the paint. So they're sending more help from the wings. This leaves shooters open for wide open looks. And no, it's not complicated. It's just all due to his ability to attack the paint. All right, back to buckets. When the hedger doesn't do a good job of closing the gap, Dennis can split with the best of them. And the bad thing for the defense is this gets him right into his kill zone in the middle of the paint. From this spot, he can rise up for a finish. Get am ones, throw down dunks, or drop dimes. And it's a skill that makes him even tougher to defend in a ball screen because it puts all the pressure on the big. The bigs can't allow him to turn the corner on the outside, but they also can't give up the split on the inside. This next situation, the big is down, meaning he's staying below the screen trying to prevent any penetration. This is how bigs typically defend pick and roll in the NBA, and both Dennis and Kyrie are snaking the big. You can see why they call it a snake by their motion. They're coming off the screen left, but then snaking across back to their right, which is very tough for bigs to stop. The reason they do this is because opponents are deciding to allow the pull-up jumper when they come off the screen. The counter to a snake would be a double cross to fake the snake and cross back to their left. This is not a drill. Only the best guards in the world can do this on the read without premeditating it. It's a high-level read that we'll be seeing a lot of from Dennis throughout his career. It goes without saying that you have to be able to shoot the ball in the NBA. 
And like we talked about earlier, Dennis can shoot well enough to keep the defense honest. And now that he's a pro, his numbers should increase over the next few years. For instance, in Kevin Durant's rookie season, he shot 29% from three. Now he's shooting 38%. So when guys put in the work, their numbers typically increase. And in Dennis's case, his ability to pull up when his defender goes under the screen is extremely important. The more jumpers he knocks down, the easier it'll be for him to drive. Which brings us to our last read of the day. Many times defenders will start to cheat over top, in which case Dennis will reject the screen and attack the basket. Sometimes this is intentional by the defense, and sometimes it's Dennis using the screen as a decoy to attack an open post. Either way, he knows how to handle the situation. On the defensive end of the floor, Dennis has quick hands and he can pickpocket opponents when they least expect it. This skill is especially useful because it puts him in transition right away. As far as just guarding the ball straight up, he's got good lateral quickness, but make no mistake, it will be an adjustment going from defending college players to defending the best players in the world. And point guard just happens to be the deepest and most competitive position in the NBA. So in order for any of these rookies to make their mark at the next level, they'll have to be able to defend. So now we reflect. In just a four year span, Dennis went from a high school sophomore to an NBA lottery pick. And I was fortunate enough to witness the process. The Dallas Mavericks got a good one, and I believe Dennis is just scratching the surface of how good he can really be. I hope that some of you young hoopers can learn from him. He stayed disciplined, stayed away from distractions, and kept his faith and persevered through the hard times. Reaching a dream isn't easy, but the struggle just makes the success taste that much sweeter in the end. Thanks for checking out today's breakdown of Dennis Smith Jr. Tune in next week for another episode of Film Room Fridays. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week.